Episode 127, Scott Alexander Clark. Good morrow and welcome back to the realm. I'm epic fantasy author J.V. Hilliard, your friendly neighborhood scribe. And today on the realm, we're featuring an author who's relaunching a successful book. He won a book award. He's renaming it. And if you ever want to find out how you can relaunch yours, this is the place to be. Scott A. Clark, welcome to the realm. Thanks, Joe. It's great to be here. Well, let's tell our viewers a little bit about your work in progress. I know it's a like a techno thriller, but uh, please tell us a little bit about the work in progress. My book is launching October 10th, um, and I do have a, a second one in progress. Um, the title of that is, is uh, still not released for public just yet, but uh, the current book is called The Duchess and the Accidental Thief, and that'll be released October 10th. Well, the reason I ask you uh, about uh, what you're working on currently is is The Duchess and the Accidental Thief is a relaunch. I know that being an indie author gives you uh, the latitude to do that kind of stuff. Tell Many of our viewers are also authors alongside readers. Tell some of those authors why you chose to go indie and was it because of something like this where you can go back and correct it and make something better after your first run at it? Well, that certainly wasn't part of my decision in going indie at first, but it was something that definitely being independent uh, allowed me to do that. When I was publishing it the first time, I had a little bit of go fever. And I was rushing some of my decisions. I don't think I spent enough time on some of the big items that you really need to know going into publishing. Like I didn't have my genre nailed down where I really thought my book sat. You know, after I published, after I hit that shiny red button, uh, I started okay. rethinking some things. Fortunately, uh, I, you know, was smart enough to have submitted uh, the manuscript for a book awards. And I won that book award and was able to take a step back and see things from a 10,000 foot level. And that's what has allowed me to do the, the relaunch. So tell our viewers a little bit about the Duchess and the Accidental Thief. Give them your two minute pitch on the book, uh, because it's, you know, as a techno thriller, I think my sci-fi viewers are going to love it. Yeah. So it starts with an out of work and out of luck IT engineer who uh, is all excited about a job interview, shows up for his interview and there's no one in the office. But he, what he doesn't realize is that uh, as he's you know trying to figure out what's going on, he's being watched by a mysterious, enigmatic, powerful woman that's only known as the Duchess. He pops up on her radar and then all kinds of things happen there. Well, I've had a, the pleasure of reading your, you know, advanced reader copy and and uh, the Duchess is obviously my favorite part of the book. I, I know, and I'm not going to give it away, but let's just say, for example, I can see the Duchess popping up in in other Scott A. Clark works in progress too. Uh, do you have a favorite character to write? Is it is there someone there that you just love to write uh, over other characters? Yeah, you know, everybody says about this is like trying to pick between your children. I would say, um, you know, the easiest character to write is my main character in the book, uh, Martin Alcott, because he's kind of like an avatar of me. Um, <laughs> it's very easy to put myself in his shoes. But my favorite character to write is his best friend, Maureen Abernathy. She's uh, Scottish. They went to uni together. Uh, and she is the foul-mouthed angel on his shoulder trying to keep him out of trouble and fails at it miserably. But uh, her art with profanity is just, it's so much fun to do. <laughs> I think we all find inspiration in other people's novels. Do you as an author have a certain other author that you emulate? Someone that you want your readers to identify with, or you could say, if you like X, then you'll like me. Yeah, I mean, if there was one that I would hope to be compared favorably to, it would be Douglas Adams. Um, I read The Hitchhiker's Guide Hitchhiker's to the Galaxy, Galaxy when I was yeah. in fourth grade. And just his gift with words, with metaphor, uh, with wit, um, just effortless wit. I would love to be compared favorably with Douglas Adams. Some of the other authors that I'm inspired by are Christopher Moore, the author of Fool and uh, Shakespeare for Squirrels. And John Scalzi is another one of my favorites. 
Well, I'm glad you brought up Douglas Adams. You know, he's a one of the granddaddies, right? Like he's someone I read also when I was very young and he's got that kind of wit. And I see that in, in your writing. Those of you who are watching, if you like Douglas Adams, you're going to like Scott stuff. I think that's a really good uh, connection there. Scott, you mentioned in your comments about the relaunch uh, that you had a hard time identifying the right genre to fit into. What led you to choose thriller and techno thriller as part of that? And why do you feel you're now in the right spot? That's a great question. Um, and it, it took me a lot of thinking to get there. Uh, I had initially uh, put this in like an urban fantasy or a magical realism category, which the more I studied about those genres, I'm like, there's really no magic to it. There's, you know, there aren't fantastical creatures and stuff. It's a very realistic kind of book. Um, but there's a ton of suspense. And the more I thought about it, I realized that I had sort of missed the mark. Um, I wanted to really emphasize that that the thriller suspense, you know, more of a Jason Bourne than a Harry Potter. Yeah, but it's like Jason Bourne meets techno thriller, right? You know, as, uh, I, I get where you're going with it. So let me ask you this. Did you have a, uh, a scene that was your favorite to write and on the converse, did you have a scene that was the hardest to write in the novel? So rewind the tape to about eight years ago when the, the seed of the story came up. Uh, it, it actually was part of a dream I had. And uh, there were two particular scenes that were almost word for word what went in the book. So those were very fun to write because I had seen them already. Yeah, you, um, you, you had, you'd lived them, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It was, it was clear as watching a movie in my head. Um, and so it was just putting those words on paper. Um, probably some of the hardest things to write actually, because I'm, I'm not really much of a plotter. I didn't know the end of the book when I first started writing it. So that's where I got stuck for a long time was, you know, figuring out who's the big bad and how, how does that resolve itself? But then the pieces started to fall into place and it was like lock tumblers clicking together as they, they all sort of fit together. And I was like, but that leads back to this thing. And oh, that's great. It, it just sort of works. I'm glad you said that because as a reader, you want those moments. You want to know when those those tumblers all click together. And as an author, those are the moments you sit back and have a drink. You're like, yeah, this works, right? Yeah, so I, I, I hear you there. So, well, look, we're coming to the end of the time here on our, our show, The Realm, today. So we're going to enter into something called the lightning round. Uh, I'm going to throw out one word questions or one sentence questions. You're going to give me one word or one sentence answers. Are you ready for the lightning round? I am ready. All right. So, Scott, I hear this rumor that you're a hockey player. Uh, and as a hockey player myself, uh, we all have our favorites. Who's your favorite hockey player and why? And you can't say <laughs> Alexander Ovechkin because I'll throw you out of the realm. Um, well, I, I would have to say it's his partner in crime, Nicholas Backstrom. I play center myself and I actually wear number 19 and that's not a coincidence. So let me ask this. I'm going to push this one a little further. So you, you walk into your house and there's a magical chest on the floor and you walk over to it and you open it up and inside is a pristine mint condition hockey card of any hockey player in the history of the NHL. Who is it? Oh, that's a good one. Uh, Alex Ovechkin. <laughs> Didn't I warn you about that? Did I not warn you about that? It was like, a deliberate troll, we'll Joe. We'll a mulligan here. Anybody but Alexander Ovechkin. Who's the other? Who's the second card in the box? Uh, my surprise to hear you, uh, Joe Sackick. Also a number 19. Not a coincidence. <laughs> well played. Well, well played. All right, final question of the lightning round. You have a chance to take any author, living or dead, to lunch and pick their brain. Um, who would that be and why? I feel like I'm cheating here, but uh, I'd have to say Douglas Adams again, uh, just to find out where he comes up with just the turns of phrases that were so uniquely his. Well, you know what? You didn't say Alex Ovechkin again, so I'll let Douglas Adams work. That just, that's just fine. So we'll let that one pass. Uh, tell everybody where they can get your stuff and how they can find you. If you're interested in learning more, um, my website is scottalexanderclark.com. Um, you can sign up for the newsletter and all kinds of updates that are coming. I try to get a newsletter out once a month, uh, but as we get closer to that release date, they may come more frequently. Thanks, Scott. Thanks for coming on to the Realm today. We appreciate it.
thanks for having me on. Um, this is uh, this has been a lot of fun. You know, Scott's a really interesting guy. Here's a guy that throws out Douglas Adams. And now that he's mentioned that, I'm telling you, I can see Douglas Adams in his writing. His book comes out in October. Check it out and support an indie author like Scott. If you want to support me, you can pick up my third novel, The Trillius Gambit. And if you want to see me in person, I'll sign it for you. Come out to the Galaxy Con in Columbus the first weekend of December. I am J.B. Hilliard. And again, thank you for coming by the realm. And may your gods go with you.